look who has their cell phone set up correctly. <gasps> no black bar over here. And no black bar over here. I felt so stupid. Thanks for not like bashing me online and making fun of me. I appreciate it. Welcome to my next raw video. Thanks so much for liking these series. We're having a lot of fun doing them. And uh, I'm gonna come at you with another hair tutorial because you guys loved the flat ironing tips and tricks so much. And somebody had requested just a regular curling wand. So we're gonna kind of talk about some tips and tricks uh, uh, on how to use a curling wand if that's what you have at home. But first, a shout out to my shirt, which is a sugar skull, amazing. My friend Kathy got that for me I, a couple of years ago. I have no idea where she got it or I'd like link it below or whatever. My eyeshadow today is from Tarte. It is this particular palette. And this is the Make Believe in Yourself palette. And my man got that for me whenever, disgusting. My lipstick is a uh, Lancome. Love it, it's a cream lipstick. Gosh, I had to like totally see that. It's like a nude, kind of more of a mauve nude, pinkish lipstick. I tend to favor those, especially if I have like, some sort of like crazy shimmer on my eye. I wanted to like keep the lips a little nude. Okay, a couple of things about this wand. This is the Numi wand. We actually have a video reviewing this where we like completely unbox it and I use it on Heather for the very first time. So maybe I'll link that below. Still in love with this Numi. These are interchangeable. I kind of favor either the biggest one in diameter <laughs> or the medium one in diameter. So today we're gonna use this, and it's not on, obviously, <laughs> uh, because I wanted to show you a couple of little details before I turned it on so that I could take my time with it without singeing my hair off. Thank you very much. So let's get started right on that because I want to show you, I've got my mirror in front of me here, so if I look up this way, that's where I am. I'm in the hair salon right now. So depending on how you wrap it on the barrel, depends on how much contact the hair is making, will give you the structure of the curl that you're desiring. So for example, if you ribbon it down, I'm kind of making sure I, that's in view. If you ribbon it down to where the hair is flat like a ribbon onto that, it's gonna have full contact with that, with that hair. And so it makes the structure of the curl really strong and solid. I always brush my curls anyway, so that's gonna loosen up, but this is gonna give you a really solid structured curl. So that's one way of doing it if you want to do the ribbon technique and a really strong curl. So we're gonna go from strong to loose. The second idea or the second technique is to hold on to the hair and allow it to twist. I'm just allowing that to slide out of my hand. So you have a little bit of twisting action. So it's gonna be kind of strong right here and you see how that doesn't make full contacts because it's kind of twisted. So what I did is I kind of pinched that hair together, put the curling iron in, and allowed that pinch to kind of like swivel down. So that's gonna give kind of that medium structure curl. You're gonna be able to shake that out a little looser. Um, so the last tip, or the last idea, is pulling that hair up and, and kind of pre-twisting that before you even bring the curling iron up. This is gonna give you your loosest curl. Everybody know why? Because the contact points on there are really small. So that's gonna not curl it as much. It's gonna be a little looser, looser a little bit more uh, beachy and tangly. So now I'm gonna heat this up because I kinda wanted to show you that um, before I heated it up. So, Let's do my hair. I'm going to pre-crimp it though. A couple of the videos ago, I had pre-crimped it um, or talked about it. I think it was in that uh, Ask the Hairdresser part four where we had kind of talked about pre-crimping the hair before you curl it. I have really fine thin hair, guys. And it, it's, it, it just, 
I guess I'm successful at creating that illusion because even in the hair salon, when I, you know, tell clients that I have fine, thin hair, they're like, oh no, no you don't. And I'm like, yeah, touch it. <laughs> and so until they touch it and feel how not dense it is, um, then they believe me. So I guess the illusion, it's, isn't it all smoke and mirrors in the beauty game? I think that's what it is. It's all an illusion. All this contour and highlighting is an illusion. All this fake hair that everybody's clipping in to create an illusion. I guess that's my business. Are y'all seeing that? Another thing that I had picked up at the drugstore the other day, which I'm loving, which I think Heather and I should do like another video on this subject because a lot of people have been kind of asking. Um, because we, even though we did a video on it, it was just okay. Um, it's a dry shampoo spray, dry shampoo spray by Herbal Essence. And I got the kind that smells like white grapefruit and mosament. I don't think it smells like white grapefruit and mosament, but what it does is it does give a lot of texture. So I'm just going to kind of spray that area that I had just crimped and kind of let that set in. I'm going to come down another section. I'm going to crimp a little more and then we'll get to curling. Let me grab a clip. I love these alligator clips. Okay. So I'm just kind of picking up sections and crimping a little. So if those of you who were here two weeks ago on my first raw where I had done the flat iron curl, I said that I would do a fashion haul, but I couldn't because my closets were still, I was having some work done at the house and I was said, oh, my closet or, closets are not um, ready to be viewed. They're still not ready. Still not ready. Still not ready. So this is my um, non-dominant side. So I'm coming over my head and I'm going to just hold on to that hair and allow this to be flat and this to be twisted. So I did that second technique wrapping that I was telling you about. So my next section, I'm coming over my head down towards my shoulder. I'm just allowing that to wrap. So whenever I, you know, have construction going on at the house and they're always like, oh yeah, two more weeks, two more weeks. It reminds me of that Tom Hanks movie called The Money Pit, which is really my life right now. I keep thinking one of these days my house is just gonna like fall down. I don't know. Did you all see that movie? It's kind of like maybe late eighties. We really grew up with a lot of Tom Hanks I think my mom had a crush on Tom Hanks, to be absolutely honest, because we watched a bunch of Tom Hanks movies, like in the 90s, and we really just wanted to watch Tom Cruise, which was a whole different Tom. And we got, I got, I, I got in trouble. I didn't get in trouble, my aunt got in trouble. I remember when Top Gun with Tom Cruise came out. Do you all remember Top Gun? And it was just, are y'all seeing? This is a totally different structure than that the flat iron. So I'm gonna to go to my other side. This is my dominant hand side, so I won't be going up and over. But I remember when Top Gun came out, and Heather, of course, was older, so she was allowed to go see it. And I can't remember if she went with some girlfriends to go see it in the um, movie theater. But anyway, maybe a year or two later, my aunt had it on VHS or something, or rented it at like a blockbuster video. Do you all remember those? Anyway, so she was, Heather and I were over at my aunt's house, I don't know why, but we watched it and mom came to get us and we were like in the middle of it and mom saw what we were watching and I think she was mad because she thought it was like not appropriate. I was in high school. I don't know, maybe a freshman, whatever. But anyway, she favored Tom Hanks. So we watched um, The Money Pit and Big and um, a lot of his movies. They were so fun.
Okay, so I forgot to tell you how I'm holding my elbow. So my elbow is still up. So this is a little bit different um, arm maneuvering instead of the flat iron. The flat iron, we came up at the side. I don't really like the idea of trying to come up at this side with this. So I always kind of turn it down. I don't know. That's just what's easier for me. Let's get this middle section going. So I'm gonna part off. When I said that that last video, my mohawk area, that's this section here as if, if I were to shave my head, I would have a little mohawk. So that's always gonna be my last section to do. up and over. Anyway, back to my house project and closets. I promise I think I'm gonna do some sort of fashion haul or closet transformation or some sort of something with my closet. I'm actually building uh, several closets upstairs and um, I'm going to do a flamenco closet for those of you who know me personally or have kind of heard tips, you know, like little here and there that I dance flamenco, which is Spanish Spanish dancing. We have a lot of costumes. I, I have a lot of costumes. And so they're kind of taking up a lot of room in my main closet. So I'm so excited to actually get all of that purged out. I can get them all hung up correctly and kind of spaced out correctly so I can feel good about it. But, I think I'd like to show you that because I think that would be super fun. Would you all like to see my flamenco costumes? <laughs> They're just big and ruffly and lots of polka dots and lots of red, lots of black. But I'm excited to get that closet organized and I'll have so much more space in my main closet if I get that together. I live in a very old house, as you saw Heather did too, and I don't know why we favor such old houses. It's so weird, we talked about it. We were like, why do we love these old houses? And I think it's just a lot of like character and charm that you just don't get in regular, you know, like brand new houses. But it does take a special person to kind of tolerate it and kind of like, get it together and live here and work here and I don't know. I, I always just think, okay, just do one room at a time. It, it's gonna be okay, just do one room at a time. But once you get one room done, something will happen. Do you know what I mean? Like something will demand your focus or attention for from the next plan that you wanna execute. I remember I've really struggled with my master bathroom and you know, it's a big long story. I ended up hiring somebody about five years ago and I stopped him, you know, three weeks into the project because it was not going the way I thought it was going to. And I just didn't feel like he was confident <clears throat> in doing it. I think he fibbed about his ability. And so of course, you know, long story short, once I questioned his ability, and questions a man's ability, um, he got butt hurt about it and sued me. So, you know, it kind of left this open gaping hole in my bathroom, in my house. And, you know, that took a long time to recover financially. And so when I finally recovered financially and had the money saved up because I wanted to pay cash, I decided it was a better idea to go to Spain. <laughs> I don't know, let me get my hairspray. So, you know, we just make these choices and, you know, I thought, okay, I'm just going to go to Spain. I'll do the bathroom later. I have other bathrooms in my house. So don't think that I was like, had no bathroom for a couple of years. So a few years later, after my Spain trip, um, I had accumulated enough cash again to, to finish the project. 
and then my I had problems with my roof. So the roof then took precedence and I had to postpone my bathroom again because my roof was coming in and then I ended up, ha so I was able to pay cash for my roof, thank goodness, but that left no money for the bathroom. So then I saved up again for the bathroom and then took that money and decided to go to Germany. So it's like, so here we are. I'm doing, I actually have two projects going on simultaneously um, of the bathroom and the upstairs. But it's just, it's like one thing after another in these old houses. So I'm just gonna create that bump right there before I twist. You know, you, it's just one thing that will demand your attention and you have to focus all your cash on that. And then another thing will kind of come up and, and demand your attention. You have to like switch your agenda of your, of your project budget money. Um, I always tend to try to think of each year I have X amount of money for, you know, house projects or something. I think I'm going to wear my hair to the side today. The last video I did it in the center, didn't I? I always do this like bump back though. All right. I don't know if this is entertaining for you guys to just stand here and watch me curl my hair. I don't know. but it's something that I have to do anyway, because I'm actually getting ready to go to work. So I just thought I'd film it. Anyway, so Heather and I have always had these really small closets, so I'm really excited to get the upstairs closets going so I can just spread out, you know? And I was the nicest girlfriend when Paul moved in, I gave him a closet. I gave him a closet. Gave him a closet. People didn't do that. So I was like the nicest girlfriend to like give him one of my teeny tiny closets. I had only had two when he moved in and one I was kind of using as a coat closet and then the other was mine. So after the roof project, we were able to kind of build a mud room at the back of the house and we got those storage closets, like coat closets from Ikea. They're amazing. They are amazing. So I got one for him, one for me. And so we were able to transfer all of our like thick winter coats, you know, that we only use six months out of the year and needed a place to put them so that it wouldn't, you know, keep space in my regular closet or his regular closet. So I'm very happy about that. I'll be very happy to get all my flamenco stuff upstairs in that closet out of the way. All right. Did I get it all curled? This is just the hairspray again. I always kind of check the back, make sure it's all curled. But okay. I'll do a little shine mist. This is from Maui, and this is their coconut milk weightless weightless oil mist. Unedited raw video weightless oil mist for dry hair. Why was that so difficult? So I'm actually going to just spray it in my hand and kind of pull that through the ends before I brush. But let's brush. This is a little bit looser curl than it was um, with that flat iron. Let's really like, let's go in this. Let's do this. This is that herbal essence. I really don't think it smells anything like anything good. 
but I don't wait until my hair, hair is oily to use that. I'm using it today for some texture and you have to kind of activate it. So I'm just rubbing it. Sometimes you just have to rub it. Yes, no. Let those ends be a little bit free. Get my bump going, yeah. Okay, give me a thumbs up if this was helpful. And if it was helpful, share it with your friends on Facebook because I can't believe like how many people will tell me that this these kind of videos are helpful and then like they're gonna share a dog video jumping over a chair instead of like helping out their girlfriends. Help out your girlfriends and show them this. I know why you don't share. It just dawned on me. You're not gonna share with your girlfriends because you wanna have better hair than them. I get it, I get it, I'd do that too. Okay guys, this is what I'm gonna look like on a Tuesday. I will see you Friday. Bye.